Hello guys and welcome back and today I want to show you just how easy and straightforward it is to install a Linux VM on your QNAP TS251D. Before I go any further though there are a few things I should clear up straight off the bat. First and foremost I am using a TS251D but I am utilizing it with 4 gig of memory. You don't need to have 4 gig of memory to take advantage of a Linux VM you can comfortably get away with 1 or 2 gig but Given that the default model of this arrives with 2 gig or 4 gig, I do recommend that you start out with a few extra gig of memory to make sure that if you are going to dedicate some memory to the VM, you've still got enough memory to maintain the running and operations of your QNAP NAS. Secondly, you can create multiple Linux VMs if you so choose. In fact, the limitation is only really to do with your CPU and memory depending on your QNAP NAS. So even though today's instructions are going to be utilizing and involving the TS251D, these instructions can be followed by pretty much any QNAP NAS that features an Intel-based CPU and at least two to four gig of memory, and you can create multiple Linux VMs as well. So rather than utilizing the Linux Station um, application, which pretty much covers all virtual machine use, and as I make this video, in fact, in the background, I am downloading a trial of a Windows VM for a different video that, you may, that may or may already be live. In the meantime, what we're going to do is head over to the App Center and install the Linux Station application. And this is the tool that allows us to install as many Linux VMs as our resources will allow. So install, go to the QTS Essentials tab, and from here, scroll down to the Happy Penguin right there, Linux Station. From there, click Install. It will also need to install Container Station as these VMs are classed as containers. So we're going to click OK, and now it's going to install both Container Station and Linux Station. And what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward to the completion of these installations of these tools. Remember, you do not need to download any VM images. You don't need to go to the Linux store. You don't need to have to go, you know, a, a version of Ubuntu or any of the other apps in it like GitHub. Everything will be done by these two apps for you. And by the end of this video, you will have a VM. But otherwise, let's fast forward to the completion of the installation of Container Station and Linux Station. Still a mouthful. Right, so as you can see, it's finished the installation of the Linux Station application. It's also installed Container Station, but we won't worry about that too much. So now that's installed Linux Station, we need to click Open here. Alternatively, you can head to the main list of options here, and Linux Station will be listed, or it will also add an app to your desktop right here. So for now, let's close the App Center and open up the Linux Station app. Now, from here, you have to choose which version of Ubuntu you want to run in Linux Station. I obviously am going to recommend the latest version because this is going to be the one with all the latest apps and is incredibly user-friendly and intuitive. It does require a little bit more of your system resources, if I'm honest, but that's not going to be too bad. As you can see, there's lots of instructions there about which applications run the best within this uh, Linux container of Ubuntu. But for now, because I want to install this version, I click here and then it will let you know that it's going to be installed directly from linuxcontainers.org. I'm going to click install and now it's going to be installing Ubuntu on our Linux station sandbox area. Now it's worth mentioning while it's doing this that you can install multiple containers using the container station application. And from there, they have access to a GitHub store and more for you to install more containers and more apps to run on your NAS. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward to the completion of the installation of Ubuntu and then show you guys the Linux station Ubuntu container in progress and in utilization. Let's fast forward. And here we are on the desktop of our Linux based Ubuntu installation and we're still running as you can see on our TS251D and if we go a little bit into it we've got the boot up splash screen here and for those that have ever used the Mac OS you're probably quite familiar with a lot of this layout. I do find that Ubuntu finds a great line between Windows and Mac operating systems and it's incredibly light as an OS to run. So just giving a little bit of information there about the device you can set up live updates and patches if you choose uh, i'm not going to do that for now but you can get all of the updates that you want and i'm going to allow to send all that information if i so choose 
and after this it will recommend applications that you can install if you want now there are loads of ways to access your linux based vm if you want you can access it as i am right now via a web browser you can access you, you can set up remote access if you so choose via the qnap itself by accessing remote access values here alternatively within the settings you can scroll straight on down to network or sharing and then from there you can create screen sharing this will allow you to remote access this vm over the internet with screen sharing enabled you can then say if you want a password and ultimately gain access to this device remotely anywhere in the world not just the network now there are loads of things you can do with a linux based vm that are possible on a mac or windows system browse the internet look um uh, edit documents watch media even edit photo and video with a powerful enough nas as you can see if we go back to the QNAP NAS that we're running this on, and we go to the resource monitor, we can take a look at how much is being consumed by this VM while we're using this NAS. Because you can see, we're utilizing 2.28 or four gigabytes of memory. So luckily, we've still got lots of memory and space available for our NAS, and we're able to use this NAS at exactly the same time as our Linux VM. It is that straightforward to create a Linux virtual machine on our NAS. Now, if you want, you can install more applications if you so choose. If we carry on here, we can have a look at different kinds of applications. Again, some word processing, some others. If you want, we can have a look at installing uh, remote access applications. Let's see if TeamView is on there. We'll have a look. And it looks like there's no team viewer on this. Oh, that's a shame. But you can still access this virtual machine using VNC free access software, such as, where is it? Real VNC right there. Alternatively, if you set it up correctly, you can use remote desktop connection there. Enter the IP, the VNC IP right here, and then you can access this, uh, this virtual machine remotely. It's that straightforward. And still, you can access your QNAP via QTS within the virtual machine if you so choose. It is a handy little tool, and it's just another way in which you could take advantage of your QNAP NAS in more ways than just boring storage. As you can see, we're now going full meta. We're going full inception by accessing our NAS from within the VM, which is living on the NAS, it's that crazy. Um, right now, we're probably gonna see those resource monitors jumping up quite significantly while we're accessing the NAS remotely from within the VM, from within the NAS. And if we want, we could go full inception, because I can probably hear a lot of you at home thinking this. Why don't we open up the VM from within the VM, from within QTS, from within the NAS? Why not? Let's throw caution to the wind. Let's be crazy town and see what happens. Get rid of that privacy notice there. We're loading this up, and now we're going to access our virtual Linux machine from within the virtual Linux machine on a NAS via the NAS while it's on a NAS. This is about as deep as it gets. I'm fairly certain I can hear Leonardo DiCaprio losing it in the background, and there we are. Things have gone crazy. So we may have to close that VM right there before things break. But that is as easy as it is to set up a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine no less, on your NAS. And a 251D still gives you sufficient hardware in order to do that. Just make sure you've got 4 gig of memory. If you've got any questions about this today, or I'm going to do a full overview of um, uh, Ubuntu 18 on a QNAP now is very soon but otherwise if you've enjoyed this click like if you've got any questions uh, do let me know in the comments if you want to learn more click subscribe and I'll see you next time